figured I'd do a little video on uh on how to waterproof this. I went riding this weekend. I didn't think I'd be going too deep, but I ended up going about up to the headlight pod deep. So of course I had the same problem as everybody else with the four wheel light, four -wheel drive light flashing. Um, I had to pull all this off, wash it. Battery box is full of sand, so I did some extra things on that. The back box drilled a bunch of drill drain holes because the ones they provide are about it's this one right there, that little itty one right there is the one they give you. So I drilled five more there, and then the little X in there, you can see, let's see here, this little line right here, right there, that they uh, they put from the factory. So I just took a drill and wallered them out and then put two more holes beside those. Even though the battery's going to be sitting on it, the little channels will fill up with sand and stuff, and then... Hopefully, be a little better about draining out, but it's still gonna clog up either way you go. So, pull your plastics off, and then you got this computer right here that sits right here. So you pull that out, get that out of the way, take the screw off that's right here, and then there'll be another one. I think it's lighting a good spot. There's not really too much good lightning down here. And then there'll be another screw right there. No screw there. You take them off and pull this cap off right here, which would be this right here, which has the screws in it. Here, there, and there. Pull them off, and we're gonna do away with this this whole thing. So I'm gonna I gotta pop these tabs out right here to get these fuses and stuff out, and then we're gonna take this dry box that I have and we're gonna sacrifice it break the handle off of it drill a hole in the corner of it right here take a dremel and cut it right here take all this foam out you know you see people that see uh, one or two people that have done this so far but nobody really tells you how to do it so i did the research myself figured it out and i figured i'd make a little video on it this was a little bigger than what you would normally use but it's kind of all i got for right now and i've got limited time i'll be working for two weeks so I might do what I got. There's plenty of room right there for one of these to go. So uh, I'm going to pop these tabs and cut this off and I'll get back with you. Got the whole ordeal cut off pretty much well, pretty well cleaned up. I mean, can't really get too much better than that. So, got that out of there. And for anybody that does do this, note to self, the starter relay is actually bolted to the bottom of it, wherever I threw it. It's actually bolted right there. So this will sit up there on the four-wheeler like so. And the starter relay is bolted right down there under it, which I did not know, but now I do. So now I gotta kind of find another place to rebolt that, or at least tuck it up in here and have it out of the way. And uh, yeah, I got that pretty well, pretty well cleaned up. It's kind of hard to clean up burnt or melting plastic with a Dremel. I had a blade explode on me and nearly kill me. Um, so I just used a little. A little uh, sanding blade or tip bit got melted plastic all over it. Had some plastic fly off and hit me in the arm, burn me. So now we're gonna take step two, try to cut this down this corner and get this down to. I mean, we don't want to take too much off of it, you just want to take enough off for this harness right here to slide down into. So you want to drop it, you want to cut about about that wide right there and you want to cut down about 
I don't know, I'd say maybe half an inch deep. So we're gonna take a Dremel, take two on a blade and see if I can't cut it without exploding another blade. And uh, I'll catch up with y'all on that one. So far, I made it so far. I had to go buy another box because the other one was too big for my preferences. So I wanted something a little bit smaller. Went ahead and cut it out. Got the hole. Now, it's gonna mount up here like so. It's gonna sit like that. And then the wires will come in over top. Of course, the computer will be back up in this spot so it'll be out of the way. And this will just flop back up and go right back into where it's supposed to be. But, I could put it like this, where it'd be a little smarter and have the wires coming in the bottom down here. So we'll kind of get to that and figure that part out. Oh. Got a little guest. What's up? Ugly spires. Fine. All right, so ran into a little bit of a setback. We don't have no silicone. Got to get that tomorrow, but got all of this stuff figured out. Got it figured out which way I want it to go. So we're just going to kind of mount it up and let it uh let it finish drying out i reckon because i mean it did get wet so anyway, i'm going to put it in here and let it dry out overnight even though it's already dried out overnight i'm going to mount it up and get it get it stout and ready to roll Classic still gonna fit right with that on there? Yeah. See this set right here just like that? Yeah. Should fit better. This is pretty much finished product. I did it this way, put the cut at the bottom that way it fit a little better. I gotta I go buy some silicone tomorrow, so this part's kind of pretty much done now. And that's pretty much it's exactly how I want it. The snow, I mean, it ain't going nowhere. And when I get done, nothing will be able to get into it, but everything's in there. Twenty-four dollars to protect your four-wheel drive system and keep it from flashing it's done dry well my battery ain't connected up to there but <laughs> but i have no more four-wheel drive flashing anymore since it's dried out like everybody else so everything else up here is dielectric greased i got a my zip tie broke on my four-wheel drive actuator connector so i gotta remount it up again and um we'll end up doing like project ajax with the with the uh crankcase breather and then I gotta redo some of my wires because it's on the crankcase monitor. Yeah, and then redo some of my wires because my speaker stopped working. So I gotta redo the wiring on it and put that boot on the snorkel to keep it from cutting a hole in it and a few other little small things and that'll be it. Alright, I figured I'd do this part too. Um we're gonna drop the swing arm up here and pull this axle out, clean my diff fluid out and uh, pack the splines full of grease. That way, I won't be getting a bunch of water in it. And it'll help protect it just a little bit and see if we can't get some of this grass I got stuck in here out.
And then uh, we're just gonna pull this bolt, let it drop down, and then we'll pull the axle like that. And hopefully that'll, that'll do perfect. Well, actually, you know what? We're gonna pull that one out and pick it up. It should pull the axle right out. Alright y'all, well, a little update. You can't just take the bottom one out, you gotta take the bottom and top, in my opinion. Some people may have to, may have to may know how to do it a little better, but in my opinion it works better if you take both of them out and then just pull on it like a hammer. The axle will pop right out. But... Alright, See y'all. See if I can get it nice and greased up, see it's all in the shaft. Get it all around that little seal. Get a nice little bead. And then you take it and put some ax or grease back on the spline on the axle. Right here. Grease the splines up a little bit. Kind of put some right here. This should be nice and sealed up. Still got grass on this from this weekend riding yesterday, but we'll get that all taken care of. Um, I'm gonna do that to both sides. And I'll probably end up doing it to the front too. I went ahead and drained my diff oil. I'm gonna go ahead and change it. It wasn't really that bad. Um, these Honda Diffs seals just suck, so it's best to go ahead and pull them out. I should have done it a while ago, but better late than never, I reckon. So, first diff oil change and seal. Should be good after this, though. Packed it full of marine grease. Um, the airbox is doing really good. Snorkel's doing really good. I checked the airbox today after riding all weekend and having it all the way up to the handlebars for a solid five minutes. And there was no uh, no leakage. There was a little bit of drimmage from a little bit of dirt that come in in one spot. So I'll just go ahead and add some ultra gray to that. And then it should be perfect. So I think I'm going to cut the video right here for a little bit. And then I may, and I'll just go ahead and do the other side. Since y'all pretty much already seen me do this side, know how to do this side. And then I'll just switch to the front and explain that and then put you back on a time lapse again and see how that goes. All right, y'all, see. All right, so the problem I'm having with the rear, if I can find my light, wherever it went, there it is, it must have died. Finally. Yep, it died. Well, let me see here, let me get me a light. problem I'm having in the rear see this cup well if you can tell if I can't use a good angle as you see there's a gap in between the cup and the diff and on this side perfect nothing no gap no nothing so this goes if I come over here and knock this axle in it knocks this one out whether it's bolted I mean I did one axle, had the other axle mounted with the tire back on it, and it still knocked it out. Ask me why, I don't know if anybody else knows that watches this. More than welcome to comment and tell me why. Uh, I'm assuming what my theory was, was uh, too much pressure in the axle, or the rear diff causing the other uh, shaft to shove back out. But I've pulled the drain bolt off, the fill bolt off the diff, um, I, I can't figure out why it's doing it. So, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna keep working at it for just a couple minutes and see if I can't figure it out and then I'll get back with you. Alright, well, I got both axles back in. I got an even amount of gap. Everything's put back together. You can't really see it right a second due to crappy lighting, but everything's back on. Now I'm gonna kind of settle up some electrical 
ordeals with my speaker and stuff and then see how that goes so this will probably be the end of the video i don't think i'm gonna really record any more else just due to the fact it's all boring and not important stuff so it don't really matter all too much so i think i'm gonna let that be it for this little tutorial so say video we'll call it call it there but appreciate y'all watching subscribe like and keep watching for more videos